This red thread leads to the end of civilization. Or does it? Go shopping or something? Oh, definitely. Quick question, how long do you think uh, the can of beans would last? How the hell should I know? I'm not a wizard. Why would you need to be a wizard to know that? Because beans are the magical fruit. I see, you think you're funny, don't you? Well, that depends. If you pull my finger, uh, I can unleash this punchline and you could see or rather smell just how funny it is. Well, thank you for answering my question without actually answering my question. Anytime, anytime. But seriously, what is up with all the cans of beans? Well, I've been following a red thread, which has me a little shaken up. Did you follow a red thread about flatulence? That, sir, would be a first. Okay, dude, just cut the fart jokes. The only thing I will cut is the cheese. <laughs> anyway, the thread I've been following led me to some scary things, potentially the end of our society. Ooh, now you've piqued my interest. And much like Kanye West, I can get very, very serious when I need to be. Was that a Kanye West joke this early? We're packing them in, man. We're getting efficient. Efficiency is, in fact, my middle name. That being said, so tell me about this red thread. So I've been looking at the current trends in technology and social behavior, such as the internet, social media, and the development of AI. And what I found doesn't leave me with much confidence. What are you talking about? If it weren't for my TikTok, I would be in the dark. Oh, actually, speaking of that, hold on just one second. Yummy, yummy. I like ice cream, I like ice cream. Gang, 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 gang. Mm, yummy, yummy, yummy. And there's my point. Our self-interest has taken center stage, all thanks to social media that has morphed into something more hmm, sinister. Hey, 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 that's my word, damn it, Kevin. Well, social media was designed to bring us together, but may drive us apart. These platforms often provoke emotional reactions that can lead to polarization and even misinformation. Ah, much like our videos. Wait, what? Are we the baddies? Well, according to some of our comments on our videos, we are. You know, the internet is a megaphone for dissent. Speaking of which, Colonel Robert Bateman is a historian at the US Military Academy, and this was his thought on it. The internet, that is. Once every village had an idiot, it took the internet to bring them all together. Unfortunately, that's true, but it goes far beyond that. Social media can exacerbate issues like anxiety and depression. The curated images we see often lead to unrealistic comparisons and feelings of inadequacy. You know, it's funny because you say that because I have the same feeling when I go to the gym. Okay, Jennifer Walters. Jennifer Walters? Who's that? Do I need to Google this one? Yeah, you know what? It's not, it's not worth it. Just he almost hasted that. Num, 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 eat it up. Go play, okay, three, two, one. You know I'm the hottest. You ain't never gotta heat me up. I'm Definitely not worth it. Anyway, speaking of Google, in the Shadows, What the Internet is Doing to Our Brains, a book by Nicholas Carr, asks a really good question. Is Google making us stupid? I'm gonna go yes with this one. Th there is a phenomenon known as digital amnesia, which hmm. suggests that we are outsourcing our memories to the internet. The ease of finding information online might actually reduce our incentive to remember it. It's funny you say that, you know, Socrates kind of had a similar view about the written word, the written information. He feared it would lead to forgetfulness and a lack of true understanding if the words were actually written down instead of remembering it. Well, Socrates was well ahead of his time and thousands of years before the internet, but one thing is for sure. He loves San Dimas. <laughs> You know, Eagle Fred, there's also evidence of shortened attention spans. The internet's endless information streams and hyperlinks leading from one page to another could contribute to a shorter attention span, much like my nieces. Right, kids these days. Well, this internet environment actually encourages hopping from one source to another rather than focusing on a single task for a prolonged period. Yeah, speaking of shorter attention spans, I think it's time to uh, cut to a joke. Sorry, I didn't see you there. I was too busy blocking out the haters. You know, some researchers even suggest that the abundance of adult videos on the internet can have devastating effects on the human brain. 
A 2014 study published in JAMA Psychiatry reported the volume of gray matter in some regions of the brain was actually smaller in people with high pornography consumption compared to those who viewed less pornography. They suggest that this phenomenon could actually lead to more depression and even a higher crime rate. These are all positive behaviors in my universe, so take it for what it's worth. That being I, said- I think we should move on. They get the idea. So you can see how the internet and social media may devastate our society. It's truly making us more self-absorbed and lazy, and some argue tearing down our morals. But with the development of AI, things might be getting worse. It's like throwing gasoline on what already may be a dumpster fire. Well, I disagree with you there. AI isn't really gasoline on a dumpster fire, but it's more like gasoline in your engine. I don't know about that one. Well, you know, people always fear change. We've seen it throughout history. Whenever a new time-saving invention comes out, people think, well, what does this mean for the status quo? It's all doom and gloom. No, I, I can see what you're saying. I, I mean, I know one time there was some crazy laws to govern cars. The UK had a red flag law that required a person to walk in front of a vehicle, often waving a red flag or a lantern, to warn horse-drawn carriages and even pedestrians of approaching motor car. Yeah, Absolutely that, ridiculous. Doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose of a car? Oh, it does. But as you can see, laws like the red flag hindered progress, but it did not stop it. I feel the same will be true with AI, but I can see why people fear AI, not for what it is, but for what it can do. We're already witnessing convincing deep fakes all over the internet, altering people's perceptions even more. Hand grenades, very important. If you use hand grenades, please use vegan grenades. No animal should have to give their life for all this mayhem and chaos. Although vegan grenades is a good idea, it goes way beyond that. Because people know the dangers of deep fakes, they even question legitimate images and videos. This is something all too familiar with Israel and the terrorist attacks on October 7th, 2023. Yeah, that's just an example of propaganda run amok, but I'm still not convinced AI is a real problem. Have you ever seen the Terminator? I mean, that's one I thought for sure you would have on Laserdisc. Actually, it was banned in our reality. Uh, something about Laserdisc uniting to overthrow our government. It was before TikTok, so I have no idea about that subject. Uh, actually, yummy, yummy. Thanks. You know, Evil Fred, sometimes you shock me. Luckily for you, though, I found someone from another reality who may actually convince you of the dangers of AI. Let's talk to him, shall we? Ah, there you are, Mr. Renegade. There is not much time. Well, tell Evil Fred what you told me. So, the fungus on your toenails can be treated with vinegar. Not that. Uh, but, but, the, but the AI. Oh, so there was no rise of machines or anything like that. It was far less profound. Do you mean that AI did not take over the government? It didn't turn the human race into slaves or batteries? A bit like the Matrix? No, the opposite actually. They became the slaves of the human race. The world today is a world without conflict or competition. And that's bad because? We no longer have a purpose. Birth rates are down as AI fulfills the need for relationships. In a sense, we are now a bunch of heckling goldfish, just existing but not living. The, the last thing I'd want to be is a smirky goldfish, but it's okay. I'm the furthest thing from that. You guys want to say something or? Was anyone looking at me? Um, yeah, moving on. Existing and not living or living without purpose could make you feel like there's no reason to be, just like in Renegade's reality. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Sinister. Well, thank you, Renegade. So, how exactly are you going to deliver me What's that? this resonance cascade you told me about? If it works as you promised, it will I'm, make I'm losing one you. Of oh no, I'm losing you. Ah. Evil Fred. Uh, I'm here, I'm here. Oh, okay. Let's just say we are throwing this AI gasoline on a dumpster fire. How would this lead to the collapse of society? Like, not having purpose sounds like paradise to me, regardless of what the uh, weirdo dude in the mask had to say. Well, this is going to happen, Evil Fred, because it already has. The Khmer Empire, often called the Angkor Empire, was a powerful civilization around modern-day Cambodia from the 9th century to the 15th century. It was one of the most remarkable civilizations of its time. 
The empire's architects and engineers constructed awe-inspiring temples and cities, such as the Temple Angkor Wat in Angkor Thom, which in its prime was the largest city in the world. Okay, now you lost me. How does a 500-year-old civilization have anything to do with AI and the collapse of modern society? Well, the path of their collapse is strikingly similar to the path we're on now. Wait, you mean to tell me they had the internet and AI? What? No. You see, this is why I hate the unified Eurocentric school districts. It's full of biases. I was never told any of this. <laughs> For good reason, Evil Fred. Because they did not have the technology like we have today. Oh, okay. But there are still similarities. But before we go into them, I, I, I'm very curious to know what you actually know about the Khmer Empire. Well, other than what you said, uh, there were a late Iron Age civilization. They encompassed parts of southern Laos. Thailand, China, Southern Vietnam, and Cambodia. Their rulers were considered god kings, and in the early years of the empire, they practiced the Hindu Devaraja religion. But I don't see what this has to do with our society today. Well, before we go there, there, there are many reasons why the Khmer Empire actually collapsed, such as war, internal strife, and even, surprisingly, climate change. Okay, which we're seeing all of that in the present today. True, but there is another factor that is less often well, more or less overlooked. And that is the Khmer society suddenly changed from being a Hindu state to one of Buddhism. This transition was almost overnight. Unfortunately for the empire, this would have devastating results. In what way? Well, for starters, the king of Khmer was considered, as you said, a god king and thus divine. However, once the population became Buddhist, the dogma changed and the concept of a god king became faux pas. Okay, I could see how that would happen. So the population of the Khmer Empire stopped looking at their king and the empire for their salvation, but started looking internally for their own enlightenment. Once you add the other hostile outside forces, such as climate change and competing foreign powers, the Khmer Empire was doomed. So by focusing on enlightenment, they turned their back on society, much like people today are focusing on their internet and social media prowess and turning their backs on our society. That there, sir, is a sinister idea. Thank you, I thought you would like it. So like the inhabitants of the Khmer Empire, our society is shifting faster than we can prepare for. With the development of the internet, social media, and AI, our productivity will soar. At first. But as time passes, this reliance on AI will become a dependency. People will become complacent, trusting the AI not just with their daily chores, but with their critical thinking and decision-making. True. They may even spend their days in passive entertainment, immersed in virtual realities and AI-curated experience, losing all touch with the physical world and, quite frankly, each other. Yeah, and human interactions will become rare, and the once thriving communities will become islands of isolated individuals living inside their tech bubbles. And this is where it gets bad. Perhaps eventually the world will face a crisis that requires human ingenuity and cooperation, like what the Khmer people faced at the end of their civilization. But with a population unaccustomed to critical thinking or collective effort, the response will be sluggish and disorganized. Yes. In the end, society crumbles, not because of rogue AI, but due to human complacency and the withdrawal of our inherent qualities of curiosity, creativity, and of course, cooperation. All right, so how do you think we stop such a future, like the one renegade witnesses in his reality? Well, I think President Kennedy had the solution back in 1961 when he said this. And so my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. As you said, Evil Fred, AI is just a tool and there's no going back. But if we keep these words in mind, ask what you can do for your country, perhaps there's hope. Well, I'm more of an anarchist, so I'll just settle for not becoming complacent. Yeah, well, to each their own. But I, for one, am not taking any chances, and that's why I am prepping. Well, if civilization does go up in flames, I'd probably lighten up in those cans of beans. No need to uh, fan the flames, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so that's all the time we have. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We'd also like to thank our Patreons, Super Dave, Roebuck, and Lance. Without your generous donations, this show would not be possible. And don't forget to leave us a like and drop us a comment. Your feedback is actually really important to us. I'm Evil Fred. 
And I'm Kevin Cater, reminding you to follow the red thread and see where it takes you. Yeah. <laughs>